my name is Jennifer Jackson. I'm a registered nurse and I'm an assistant professor at the Faculty of Nursing at the University of Calgary. And this video is about the research process for nurses. So we're going to introduce key concepts in nursing research and talk about how that process is similar to the work we do in clinical practice. So research is integral to the nursing profession and it is also a long part of our history. So nurses have been doing research literally as long as we have been a formalized professional group. So here are some pictures of work that was done by Florence Nightingale. And um, I went to the Florence Nightingale Faculty of Nursing, Midwifery and Palliative Care at King's College London for my PhD. So I'm a big fan of Florence. I know that she is not beyond reproach and you know, there's lots of things we can discuss about context and um, her views during the Victorian era in England. But for today, we're gonna to focus on her impact on research and how that has contributed to research that we have today. So when we look at these things, um, we have the image of the rosettes where this was the first infographic that was ever drawn and it was the first visual depiction of data in the modern world. So not only did Florence Nightingale create statistics by keeping track of all of the outcomes and all of the um, soldiers that she worked with in Crimea, she then used those statistics to create visuals. Um, and this visual shows like the blue is the number of people that were dying and this showed how many people died before she got there and then how many people died after she got there and implemented her, um, her findings or her different approaches to public health, to epidemiology and all of these different things. So Florence Nightingale never gets credit for being um, the founder of modern statistics and the first woman, first woman who was inducted into the society, Royal Society of Statistics in the UK. But she also created the first ever visual depictions of data, which have been completely revolutionized um, in our digital world. If you think about how many infographics, how many graphs and different things that we see. So this was very important work and it's nice to know that something really remarkable came from nursing. Additionally, Florence created um, hospital plans. She was a bit of an architect and she also created um, in her book, uh, Notes on Hospitals. This is an example of a sheet that she created so that essentially nurse managers can keep track of data in their clinical setting. So for everybody who has to report, go through mandatory reporting, like you may curse or you may thank Florence Nightingale, but one way or another, she had the foresight to say, we need to be able to track what we're doing and see if it makes a difference. So why this is important is because sometimes you hear things like, nursing should be taught by apprenticeship, nurses shouldn't need university degrees, but research is one of the pillars that helps to make us a profession. That way we are not a vocation, we are not, um, you know, another kind of group. We are a profession because we have our own research. And what our research does is it gives us a specific knowledge base that we have created that nobody else has. So having that disciplinary knowledge that we draw from in our practice is what makes us a profession and really reinforces the professional designation of nurses. So in your career as a nurse, you may never work in research or you may, you know, help recruit if you're working clinically, you may help recruit patients into a study, you may just be responsible for calling the research nurse and letting them know that there's opportunities for research. If you're a manager, you might be approving studies at your site, but whatever role you have, I hope that you will be supportive of the research process in one way or another, because this is what separates nursing from other roles is that we have our discipline specific knowledge. And this is so integral to what we do that we really have to protect it. And so even if you don't want to become a researcher yourself, find ways to support research because that is what enables nursing to be a profession. 
Okay, so moving on to what is the research process and what does research look like for nurses? So sometimes it can be a bit overwhelming if you're reading research studies and there are, you know, studies on everything. There's large randomized control trials of, uh, you know, neonatal intensive care interventions up to their studies on um, how people with dementia react to different textures of different quilts that they touch and everything in between. So you have such a wide variety of studies. How are you ever supposed to wrap your head around what they all mean? So when you're approaching research, I encourage you to think of it a bit like food. And goodness knows I love food, so I love a good food analogy. When we think about food, whether we have, you know, Italian, Japanese, American, whatever the case may be, on the plate, these all look really different. But when we break it down, food around the world in basically every cuisine basically has three parts. A starch, a protein, and vegetables or fruits. So when you look for what is the starch, what is the protein, and what is the fruits and vegetables, then it becomes clearer how all of these meals are different, but they have those same things in common. And then we can kind of classify them based on you know, do they use pasta, do they use rice, do they use potatoes, and so forth. So when you're looking at research, try and identify those integral pieces, and it doesn't really matter what the flavor of the study is, if you can see where those integral pieces are and how they stand out, that will give you a good first step towards working with that research, appraising it, understanding it. So you wanna look for those backbones. We're going to go through now in a bit more detail what those are. And why we need to know those is then that gives us the ability to interpret and appraise and apply research, even if we're not doing research directly. So once you know what to look for in those key big pieces, then if somebody says, I'm going to bring you a steak and I want you to cut it with a wooden spoon, you can say, hold on a second. That's not really how that's supposed to go. And that enables you to pick up and say, this doesn't match. The, you know, these expectations don't quite align with the findings or, you know, this isn't really something we can implement in our setting. So that gives you the ability to think critically and appraise research critically and then make decisions based on research for other areas of practice. So when we look at the nursing process and the research process, they're very similar. And actually, the nursing process is very similar to most, whether it's um, education, policy development, research, all of those basically rely around the same principles. So once you know the nursing process, you can, you know, dip your toe in any of those other things. The thing to remember is that these, these different pieces of the process correspond with others. So don't see it as I have to learn this entirely new thing. What you need to do is take knowledge you already have and translate it to a different context. So you do this all the time clinically. Like if you can use a stethoscope on an adult, well, it's not that much different to use a stethoscope on a child. Very similar here. If you know how to use the nursing process of assess, plan, implement, evaluate, it's not that much more to apply that same thinking to how we move through the research process. So in brief, we want to identify what the problem is, which corresponds with assessment. We need to create a study design or plan how we're going to do research study. We go out and we collect data, which is implementing that study design. And then we analyze the data and see what we came up with, which is evaluating. So the research process does have some more detail underneath it, but generally those main pieces correspond with the nursing process. So see it as applying that knowledge in a new way. So looking in more detail, when you're going through a research study, this is like a very broad general overview. And each study, depending on the methodology, depending on the philosophy behind it, it's going to have different pieces. But generally, we move from a place of Lego chaos to a place of Lego understanding, if you will. 
So we start by either identifying a problem or a question. Often this can come from clinical practice and for researchers one of the best things we can do is collaborate with people who are working clinically or collaborate with patients, community partners and say what problems do you have or what questions do you have that you haven't really been able to solve or you haven't been able to solve on a broad scale and how can we help. So from there, generally, you do a literature review and say, what do we already know about this issue? How has it been studied? What groups have worked on this? And what have they found so far? From there, you develop a question um, or aims and objectives that guide your study. Generally, you can use the PICO framework or there's different variations of the PICO framework. But one way or another, you need to have a very clear question because that is like your roadmap for the rest of the study to say, how are we going to address this issue? And if you can really nail the question, it makes everything else much easier because you have a clear sense of what you're doing and why. The next phase is to design the study or use a methodology. And often people are really quick to say, okay, I wanna do um, you know, ethnographic observations. But then if you say, well, why do you have, uh, you know, why do you want to do those? What is the philosophy of this study? What is the question you have? What, are, what problem are you trying to solve? Then it gets a little bit murky. So just to say the design and the methodology come in the middle of this process. They're not the thing that you start with generally. After we have all of that planning ready and we have ethical approval and we have all of our equipment and staff and supplies in place, then we are going to collect data. And that can look like a lot of different things. So whether it's interviews, surveys, focus groups, observations, um, natural experiments, it can be all kinds of things. But one way or another, we collect data and then analyze that data and say, what are we learning here? What is this teaching us? What is this showing us? And what can we take from this information that will help us to um, answer the problem or question we started with? And from that an, um, analysis, you're going to report the results. So it is critical, especially in nursing, which is a practice discipline, that your research kind of doesn't, you don't say at the end, oh, this is really nice. I'm glad we did this and move on to the next. You need to take time to share that research, both through publications and presentations, but also outside the academy as well, and work with those same people that you collected the data from, whether they be um, patients or service users or community partners, and share that information back so that ideally that problem you started with gets solved or a measure of it is solved in the process. So walking through all of these stages helps you produce a research study. And these can take anywhere from say six months to five years, depending on um, the scale and what you're trying to look at. And so even if you don't do research yourself, have an appreciation for how much work goes into this so that when you're engaging with research maybe in a clinical setting or in an administrative setting you can appreciate and say okay how can we use this information to our advantage another thing that we want to think about is that ethics are integral in research the ethical obligations and expectations for nurses who are doing research are as serious if not more serious than the ethical expectations of nurses who are working in clinical practice. So just as when we work in clinical practice uh, we think about ethics at everything we do. Do we have consent for this medication? Do we have consent for this procedure? Is the patient and family aware of um, you know why we're doing things? Is this the plan of care that we have developed collaboratively or are we just imposing it on someone? All of those questions come up all way along. And that is very much similar with research. Ethics needs to be considered at every piece of the project, not only, you know, at the ethical application time or, you know, at the beginning and at the end. Because just like any other kind of work you do, ethics becomes an issue all the way through. And there's almost always unexpected ethical issues that come up. 
And so you need to be able to address those and anticipate that there will be some kind of thing and manage it as you go along. So just to flag and say there's whole other, um, I've got other videos on ethics, there's whole other discussions um, in the community about ethics, but I wanted to highlight that it's something you need to be very aware of throughout the research. And ethics is kind of a pass fail for a study. If the research was not conducted ethically, you're not applying it in practice. It doesn't matter what else the study found or what happened. If it was not ethical, it is not used, full stop. So just to say, I'm obviously very passionate about research and I hope that you will see this process as being part of a modern pillar of our profession. Research isn't, you know, old dudes in tweed jackets, smoking cigars, talking about, you know, concepts about the universe, although that has served us very well in the past, but that is not what research is today. Research is embodied, it is embedded, and it is essential to the work that we do as nurses, and it helps us to create new knowledge and to help people and improve their lives. And so, as I say again, even if you don't do research yourself or you're not a research nurse, have an appreciation for how research is conducted and the value it has. And then when you can articulate that, it will help support nursing as a profession, no matter what table you're seated at. So just to say that thinking of research is like an opportunity to solve problems on a very broad scale. When we do clinical interventions, we can work with one person and make a really big difference for them, which is incredibly important. We can do good research studies, we can potentially help millions of people. So it is a very worthy kind of work as well, even if it is day-to-day uh, -day quite different than working in clinical practice. And I like to think of research as the opportunity to be a bit of a knowledge astronaut because you get to explore and find things that no one ever has before or apply them in a new way or make something work better. And that is incredibly rewarding and validating. So I hope that we can all take a cue from uh, this quote that there are incredible things waiting to be known and nursing is um, the fastest growing research discipline on earth. And so it's an exciting time to be a part of nursing research. And I hope that you will be inspired by this and use it one way or another through your careers. <laughs>